Today I am making three of the easiest dump and go casseroles. Now, if you're wondering, this one right here happens to be my favorite. Now, I love making casseroles when it's a busy week and I need some leftovers. I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't love good leftovers? Now, my mom is the queen of casseroles, so she's gonna come at the very end and taste test. So we're gonna see which casserole that we've made that she likes best. Now, the first recipe I'm making today is our slow cooker ham and potato casserole. Now, I know what you're thinking. I usually don't use my slow cooker very often, but there are some things that only cook in the slow cooker, for example, this casserole. But it's good, it is so good. So first you're gonna take some cooking spray and just put it into the bottom of your slow cooker. And I'm gonna get the question, can you cook this in your Instant Pot? Ooh, you'll probably get the burn notice. Please find a slow cooker and cook it there. Now the first thing you're gonna do is add 30 ounces of your favorite hash browns. You can use shredded, but I like the little squares. I think they taste delicious. We're just gonna dump that right into the bottom. Now this recipe is so easy because you're just gonna dump everything in, then we're gonna mix it. So then we're gonna add eight ounces of sour cream, one can of cream of chicken soup. I believe this is the reduced fat. Yes, it is, and you can use either one. Both will work. Next up is two cups of ham. Now this isn't exactly two cups, but it will get the job done. If you have leftover ham, now is the perfect time to use it. You need about two cups. But we're gonna buy ones that's already pre-chopped just to make my life a little easier. Then on top of that, we're going to add two cups of cheese. Now on this little guy, we have one tablespoon of minced onion and one teaspoon of salt. We're just gonna pour this over because we're gonna mix it. All right, I suggest probably getting a bigger spoon. You're just gonna mix this, mix this all together. Now you can do this in a separate bowl just so you don't mess with your, like your cooking spray on the bottom, but I find no matter what I do, it's still gonna stick a little bit. So I like to use less dishes when it's pretty well combined. We're just gonna kind of even it out because we've got to put the stuffing on. The stuffing is what makes this delicious. I love stuffing. Using just your normal stovetop stuffing, if you have good stuffing, or a favorite kind, you can use that too. So this is what, six ounces. Six ounces of stuffing we're gonna just pour onto the top. Sometimes when you pour out the stuffing, sometimes you get all the seasoning in one place. So just make sure the seasoning is everywhere. The last thing we're gonna do, we have four tablespoons of melted butter right here. We're just going to pour that right on top of your stuffing. Now the good thing about the slow cooker is there's a lot of moisture with the slow cooker and so your butter doesn't have to cover all of the stuffing. It will still cook very nicely. So now you're just gonna put your lid on your slow cooker. Now we're just gonna cook this on high for two to three hours or you can also do it on low for about four to five. All right, I'm just gonna let this cook and then we'll come back and we'll taste it. This one is all done. It looks good. It smells so good. We're not gonna taste it yet because we've got two more recipes to go. Now the next recipe is our zucchini pizza casserole. Now we're gonna split this casserole in half today. So let's start with two zucchini. Now the trick with these is you're gonna shred them up, then press them with a paper towel. You want all the moisture out of the zucchini. So we're just gonna put this into our glass bowl. Next, we're gonna just crack an egg, put that right into there. Add a little bit of salt, so it's a fourth a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add about a fourth cup of Parmesan cheese. And as you know me, I like to eyeball things, so that's close to a fourth, right? And then just one cup of mozzarella. Again, I like to eyeball, it's okay. Okay, now we're just gonna mix this all together until everything is well combined. Okay, after that's all mixed, now we're gonna add our breadcrumbs. We need about an eighth of a cup. I'm gonna kind of guess with my fourth and make it an eighth and throw that in there. Nice. Now this is like gonna be our base of our zucchini casserole, zucchini pizza casserole. I'm excited. I'm excited to try this one. We're gonna use either a nine by nine pan. If you decide to double this recipe, you would use a nine by 13, but Nine by nine will work just great. Now we're gonna spray our pan with nonstick cooking spray. Then we're gonna go ahead and just dump this right onto the bottom. 
Now I know the noodles might be a little long. If you need to cut them up, that's fine too. We're just going to spread this out and then we're gonna press this to the bottom. So I'm actually gonna use my fingers and press this stuff in. If it feels like it's pretty wet, you can always try and get more moisture out of the zucchini, but try and do that at the beginning. We don't want wet noodles for this recipe because it won't cook as well as we want it to. So now we're gonna cook this for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Then we'll add other things on top later, but we wanna cook this as like the crust first. Looks good. Now we need to make it into our pizza. So you can take your favorite marinara sauce. If you wanna make it homemade, that's great but we want about a fourth a cup of marinara sauce. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and just kind of as you would like a pizza, that's the kind of the amount of sauce that you would need. So we don't want a ton, but we also want it covered. Now we're gonna put on our mozzarella cheese. Now you can do one cup, two cups, however much you like. I just like it so it's just a nice even layer on top. I'm gonna do pepperoni, but if you have other toppings that you like, you can even do more vegetables if you want. That would be really good too. But my kids really enjoy pepperoni. I really enjoy pepperoni. So that's what we're doing today. Looks good. Okay, put your gloves back on. Do not touch the pan while it's hot. We're gonna let this cook for about 20, oh, 10 to 20 more minutes mostly. We just need the cheese melted. Looks so good. Yes. Okay, and it's all done. It looks amazing. Mom is on her way. She's going to come and taste test it at the end. So we're gonna make one more after this and then the fun part. And the last recipe I'm making today is our chicken and broccoli casserole, which happens to be my favorite. So I have a nine by 13 pan here. We're gonna take our cooking spray and spray the bottom. I have some steamed broccoli, about four cups. If you don't wanna use an extra bowl, cause this is dump and go, you can get the steamed broccoli and steam it in the little bags. But I like fresh broccoli, that's my favorite. It just makes it taste a little bit better. So we're gonna do our four cups into the bottom of the pan. Now one tip I have with the broccoli is I like to cut it into really small pieces. It's a lot easier for the kids to eat. Then we're gonna take one can of cream of chicken soup, dump it right in there. Don't worry, we're gonna mix this around. Then we're gonna use about a half a cup of sour cream. We're gonna eyeball here, because you all know that's how we roll. Okay, then we have some curry, which trust me, having curry in here, it tastes so good. It just adds that extra flavor. So we're just gonna mix this in. We don't want it, like a giant bite of curry. So we're gonna slowly mix it into the sauce and then start incorporating all of our broccoli. Then we have about three chicken breasts that I have cooked and cut up. We're just gonna mix this in too. We just want everything incorporated together. Now, my trick with this one, if you don't want to cook your chicken breast separately, just get a rotisserie chicken. It does the same job and it's super, super easy. Once everything is all mixed together, we're just going to spread this onto the bottom. Could use your hand to flatten it out, but we'll just Keep our hands clean today. Okay, now we're gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese is the best with this one, trust me. Just trust me. So I'm gonna probably add about a cup and a half. Mostly we just want the cheese just to cover the top. We don't want it really thick with cheese like a pizza, but just enough that every bite has a little bit of cheese. Now for my favorite part. This is what makes this recipe so good. And when I was little, it was my favorite job. So I just took some bread, ripped it up into little pieces, and then I took about two tablespoons or so of melted butter, and I just dipped my bread in the butter, and then it just goes right on top. These are going to brown and taste so good. Trust me on this. Oh man, it's my favorite. Bread is on. It looks good. We're gonna cook it at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. Yes and yes. This one is done and the queen of casseroles is here. It is time to taste test and I'm excited. Mom. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're so glad she's here. First one, ham and potato casserole. That's really good. It is good. That's like cheesy casserole good. Five out of five. Five out of five. I'm also giving it a five out of five. 
This one is the zucchini pizza casserole. Your fork. Thank you. Your highness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get a bite. That is really good. That is really good. I'm definitely a five. I'm gonna rate this one a five too. Surprisingly, it's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is the chicken broccoli casserole, which happens to be my favorite. It smells I remember. so. It, it smells does. so good. Just like I remember. Same. <laughs> Same. I'm definitely a five. I'm gonna rate this one a five too. Surprisingly, it's good. Mm -hmm. Now, before we end, it is time for if we actually did what commenters say. Thanks so much for cooking with me today. If you want more dump and go recipes, I have plenty for you right up there. All right guys, we'll see you next time.